Well, Feathers, it's been another successful year for you individually. How would you sum it up in your own words, first of all? Oh, I think personally, obviously, uh, really proud. I think um, it's the best I've felt consistently um, over a season. I think there's been the occasional dip in form, and that just happens. But I think com confidence-wise, I think I've always had the confidence to go out there and sc score runs, which is um, quite a good feeling, I think, yeah. Um, so how enjoyable has that been for you, the kind of the challenge of playing against the high, higher quality decks like we see from Essex and Surrey and other teams? No, I think, I, I, I think the coolest thing about playing against these teams is that I feel that Durham hasn't felt out of place at all. I think we've been beaten a couple of times, but I think every game we've played there's always been a sniff of winning, I think. Uh, so I think as a club going forward, I think we can take confidence from actually hopefully coming fifth this season and then pushing to hopefully win it in the next year or two. A lot of those being able to win games is down to the fact that we've got runs and you've got a fair few of them this year. Uh, six centuries for you. Uh, you liked playing Lancashire a lot this year. You've got three against them and then one each against Worcestershire, Hampshire and Somerset. I have a, I have a gut feeling, I know we're going to go with this one, but which one of those knocks stands out to you as a favourite and why? Well, obviously the one against Lancashire, I think, is number one because it's a, a club record, which is quite cool. But I, I still think the, my favourite game was definitely Lanx away. Even though we lost it, I think uh, the pitch was turning and to play against the best man in the world, in my opinion, and do well against him was a, quite a big point in my career because a lot of times I struggle against spin. And to go out and score those 200s against him gave me a lot of confidence. Uh, yeah, so hopefully, hopefully I can take that forward. You mentioned the 279 here against Lancashire. You, you <coughs> broke the record for Durham's first class highest score ever. How special is that for you to do that for Durham? Because I know we spoke earlier in the year and you mentioned you owed a lot to the, you said you felt like you owed yeah. a lot to the club for helping you realise your goal. So how special was that for you to do it for Durham? I think special, I think, uh, I, I don't think, I mean, Durham have been a county for 30, 30 years, not even, and, not much more. <laughs> and then basically and there's been like two, 200 and odd players playing, so to have the record with a lot of special players that have uh, played for this club I think is quite cool. Um, <clears throat> and, and hopefully it can be broken soon because that means that we're doing well as a club. Um, but yeah, it's just quite special to have, yeah. You want to you hold on to it for a little bit though. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, you're likely to end up this uh, season finishing as leading run scorer in Division 1 and I think you're only two runs behind the overall leading run scorer in the whole county championship. You had a very good year last year as well. Do you feel like something has clicked for you over the last two years that's kind of just enabled you to score runs for fun? I think, I think the biggest thing for me is like not putting pressure on myself. I think the last, I mean, since I got here really, I've just tried to enjoy my cricket as much as possible. Uh, but since I made the move, probably back playing in South Africa, I think I come back here and it's such a cool environment um, to play, play in. And I think um, I come here and I just have as much fun as possible. And I think if I'm doing that, um, I'm not saying I will score runs, but I definitely have a higher chance of scoring runs. So I think the environment that Cambo uh, and Badger have created I think is quite special and it allows us all to play with uh, freedom and with, with a smile on our face. This year you've also been back involved with the T20 side, another opportunity to showcase your abilities in the shorter formats. How, First of all, how did that selection come about? Because you missed the first two games and you were brought back in. Was it a case of just Cambo coming to you and saying we feel like we need you to strengthen the batting lineup? Was it as simple as that? Uh, well, I think I think uh, we lost a couple guys to injury batters and I think we lost a couple guys to the World Cup so I think our batting was quite light um, so obviously Camber and Malty came up and said are, are, are you quite keen to play and I was like yeah sure I'll try I'm not sure how good I'll be but ho hopefully I can add some value and I think the six or seven games I played and I, I did okay and um, hopefully it can Continue in, in, into next year. If if I'm playing or not, I think um, yeah. Just just hope. Hopefully there'll be a chance, and then hopefully I'll take take the chance. The the batting lineup for next year is starting to take shape. You know, Emilio Gay's joined us slightly early. Ben McKinney's broken out. We're going to have Will Rhodes to add to our middle order. How exciting is that for you as a number four or five coming in, knowing that you know the opener should be able to get us off to a good start, and then you're coming in. Later on in the mid, later on in uh, to, out to the middle. Like, how exciting is that 
for you to be able to be batting alongside those guys? Yeah, I think I, I think all the <coughs> batters, even this year, have been special. But I think the, the ability to grow our batting order and have more competition for places, I think, is even more important. Um, so, so next year with those guys coming in, it will just make competition in the squad better, which just means that our squad is and team will get better and better and hopefully next year we can compete even more than we did this year and hopefully that ends with a, a trophy. Also alongside your Durham uh, success you've had more test appearances for South Africa this year, you also spent some time with the ODA, ODI A squad and you set the new highest score of 188. Do you feel a bit more entrenched? Is that is that the right way to use in the South Africa setup after obviously your breakthrough last winter and start of this yeah. year? Do you feel now you're a bit more entrenched in that South Africa setup? Uh, well, I'm 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 not exactly sure. I just know that uh, the coach that they have at the moment, I, I feel he backs me, and, and I think he backs everyone, which is a, a good spot to be in. Um, and hopefully, like te test cricket and any cricket is so, so brutal that if you go three or three or four games without scoring runs, it can change quickly. Um, but hopefully, I'm in a space where that won't, won't happen. Um, <clears throat> so, so hopefully, I can continue doing okay and stay in the mix for longer because it's a, a, a privilege to play at that level and hopefully it can continue for years to come. What are your plans for winter? I know you're, you're going back to South Africa, but you've also been picked up by the SA20 for the first time. Yeah. Does that feel a little bit more of a full circle moment, considering that you uh, declined the opportunity to enter the draft last year in order of pursuing Test cricket? Does it feel like you've kind of been rewarded in a way, of like it's all come full circle for you now being picked up by the SA20? Oh, well, I'm, I'm massive of the opinion that... Um if you score runs and stuff like that, it will, it, it will eventually happen. So I think I did the right thing by rather trying to play test cricket. And it so happened that this year for Durham, <coughs> I did okay in t T20s and then they start talking to you and then you eventually get picked up. So I think <coughs> it's, it's not, it's not a, a matter of um, because of that decision, it's finally worked out. It's just like I think if it's meant to happen, it will happen <coughs> and hopefully I can go into the uh, team and squad this year and hopefully make, make a big impact for, for uh, the Sunrisers. And then finally, what's the uh, final message you've got to our fans over the winter and more hopeful for success for Durham going into 2025? Uh, message is try to stay, stay warm until April, I guess. Um, but yeah, just that myself and the whole squad really appreciates um, them coming out this season, especially this season has been a terrible summer and most games have been freezing. Um, so for them to come out and sh show face every single um, day um, is, is, is quite special and, and, and it means a lot to the players.